said that. Although I have to say, some people are actually standing in the election campaign, not just deny that climate change is caused by human action, but deny that climate change is happening altogether. And I'd like to have um, done the trip with me, which I did over the, the Arctic, um, actually up in Greenland, just to see how the polar ice cap is actually melting. You see that, and you can't deny that climate change is, is happening. So that's a big one. I think um, sort of organized crime and human trafficking and the need to get together to um, put an end to that. And finally, I'm, I'm tied up in a sense with climate change is obviously the economy and the, the jobs. And to our way of thinking, the best way to get out of the, the situation we're in at the, the moment is through developing a carbon neutral economy through, through green, green growth putting money into energy efficiency, carbon capture and storage and, and all of those things. I mean, there are lots of other issues as well, but I think those are the three focal ones, and they're all areas. I, I, the one I'd add on actually for, for myself, um, because it's something I feel very strongly about, is also um, development policy, where the EU does a lot, but frankly could still do a, a lot better. So I, I think those are the, the issues. And they affect everybody's lives back to your home. So again, it's just so important to get over to people that who you put into the European Parliament will make a difference in terms of the way the Parliament votes on, on those issues. Mm -hmm. The Conservatives are a bit more Euro-realist, as you might have uh, gathered. I thought I We believe very much that you need big Europe to tackle some of the big issues that Elspeth has mentioned. An incoming Conservative government, for instance, trying to tackle climate change could tax the citizens of the United Kingdom right to the hilt with green taxes. It wouldn't make the slightest difference to CO2 emissions. Whereas working with 500 million people in 27 member states, you really can make a difference. Maybe the targets that the EU is setting of 20% uh, cut in CO2 by 2020 is not uh, ambitious enough. Maybe it should be higher. And you know, I hope in Copenhagen at the end of this year they go for more ambitious targets. But that's where big Europe can represent the citizen well. On the fight against global poverty, equally, you know, one country can make little impact. 27 countries can make a big impact. And right now, trying to kickstart the uh, economy, trying to get back out of recession, working together as a uh, European community, I think, is, is the way to try and bring uh, jobs and prosperity back to the people of Europe. I mean, we're looking at horrendous unemployment figures. They're talking about 28 million uh, unemployed in Europe. That is just completely unacceptable. And, you know, anything we can do working together to try and counter that has to be valid. As a party, we think uh, Europe and the European institutions have become introspective. They've spent the last 10 years when all of these problems were coming over the horizon. You know, the economic crisis, global warming, global poverty. They've spent far too much time considering institutional change, the constitution, and all this sort of rubbish, you know, and now the